the news, more Nigerians amplify calls for end to SAS brutality in hashtag end SAS protest. Reverse serial killer sentenced to death by hanging. And US president insists on face-to-face -face debate with opponents. Many thanks for joining us on the newsroom at this hour. I'm Paula Shadi for Green Day. The outrage over police brutality and extrajudicial killings by men of the Federal Special Anti-Robbery Squad, FSAS, has continued to gather momentum across the country. As the protest tag, hashtag NSAS, entered its third day, hundreds of demonstrators have besieged the Lagos State House of Assembly complex to press home their demands. Our correspondent, Abisola Adibayo, tells us more. It's the day three of the NSAS protest in Lagos, and more people have joined the movement. These protesters have only one demand, the complete scrap of the federal SAS. They say this is the only way to put an end to the unnecessary killing of the Nigerian youth across the country. Their demands have not changed. It's either the SAS unit of the police force is banned or reformed. Some of these protesters spent the night here at the entrance of the Lagos State House of Assembly complex. At daybreak, they are back at it again chanting their solidarity songs with placards in their hands. For these Nigerian youths, they've come to say enough is enough to injustices perpetrated by men of the federal SARS. They say the atrocities have become one too many and needs to be urgently addressed. The essence of this protest is not to cause any harm to anybody. Rather, the essence of this protest is just to make the minds of the youth clear to the government that we are here and then some set of persons that are meant to protect us are killing us. We don't want them to kill us. We want them to stop this killing. We don't want anything. They should end SAS. We don't want to reform. End SAS. That is why we are all gathered here. All over the nation, in Benin, in Wari, in Delta, Ibadan, Abuja, everywhere they should stop killing us. I'm here because I'm tired. I'm tired of being worried. I'm tired of worrying for my brothers, for myself too, for my boyfriend, for my, for my cousins. Everybody is tired. Sharing their different experiences with the federal SARS, the protesters say they do not feel safe with the fear of SARS operatives accosting them on the road. I went to take a bus at Ojota. I was actually stopped. And I showed, I showed them my color plate. I told them I was going to Anambra, that I was here to board the bus. But the only, the only reason that I was arrested was because I was putting on the shirt and, I, and it was not properly buttoned. And from there, they took me down to Abe Okuta before I was dropped. I was traveling last month. I got to Benin. I was tying my Dorak like this. I was inside the bus. I was at the back seat. The SAS man brought me out. Yes. You know why? Because I was tying this Dorak. He told me he wants to search my bag. I brought my bag out. I opened my bag. He said he wants to put his hand. I said, no, you can't put hand inside the bag. I said, I am the one that will open the bag. I'll bring everything inside my bag out, which I did. He found nothing. Instead of stopping such duties, they suggested the officials be assigned different duties. We don't say we should make them unemployed. We can put them or transform them into an army. Or we can send them to Sambisa. It seems, seems they are trigger happy. They, they should trigger happy on the Boko Haram terrorists. After 72 hours of protesting, they are giving the government three days ultimatum to address their demands. Because we are fighting now, it's bigger than politics. We are not here for politics. Nobody sent us here. We came because we are tired. We hear a lot of assurances. But they have said, we give them till when? Monday. Till when? Monday. Till when? Monday. So, by Tuesday, we are coming to get a response. The Lagos State House of Assembly has held an emergency sitting over the ongoing hashtag NSAS protest in the state. 
among the seven-point resolution passed after the deliberation was that the Senate and the House of Representatives should carry out a probe of the allegations against Fedra Saz, including killing and dishumanizing of innocent citizens. Abisola Adebayo, TV 360, Lagos. It is, however, a different case in Ocean State in Abuja, where the hashtag and SAS protests turned violent. Policemen reportedly in a bid to disperse the protesting youth shot indiscriminately while protesters pelted stones out the security operatives in a bid to resist any attempt to stop the protest. Meanwhile, the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamo, has condemned the violent attack on policemen by hashtag and SAS protesters which resulted in the death of Corporal Erega Stanley in Ugeli Delta State on Thursday. Adamo would describe the incident as cruel and unwarranted, one that the force would no longer tolerate any attack on its personnel or any member of the law enforcement community by any individual or group protesting on that any guys. The National Security Advisor Baba Ghana Mungono and the new interim administrator of the presidential De Niger Delta Amnesty Program, Milan Diko, have met with President Mohamed Obwari at the presidential villa in Abuja. Diko is seeking to return the program to its original mandate of ensuring security and development in the region and properly rehabilitating ex agitators in the region. According to him, the program is owing 71 billion naira while another 712 billion naira cannot be accounted for. He also insists that an amnesty program cannot exist indefinitely, adding that the program needs to be overhauled. And in Ondo State, less than 24 hours to the governorship debate in Ondo State, the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, has ordered the restriction of vehicle movement in the state from 11.59 p.m. tonight to 6 p.m. on Saturday, Fox postman Frank Umba in a statement released on Friday said the order is part of efforts by the force to ensure effective coordination of public order and safety during the poll. He added that the restriction order, among other things, is aimed at preventing the circulation and use of illicit arms and hard drugs as well as movement of political thugs from other states to Undo. The IGP also enjoined the citizens to bear any inconveniences arising from the restriction order. Noting that the order is part of necessary sacrifices everyone has to endure to, en to, en to ensure and sustain democracy in the country. For residents of Barua in Lagos State, it is time to count your losses and take stock of damages that claimed the lives of five people and rendered countless homeless with the destruction of properties worth millions of naira. The gas explosion, which occurred on Thursday, was said to have been caused by a safety breach by workers at a gas plant. The location of the gas plant in a residential area, which was highly contested by the community, is now the bone of contention. Residents allege that the owner of the gas plant must have caught corners to obtain permission to set up such a sensitive business in the residential area. From what I can testify to, you are not allowed to give a gas plant approval that is not up to two plots. And that very land is not up to a plot. For over, for almost two years, or over two years, that this man, this gas plant has been running. Are you now telling me that you don't know this guy does not have approval? Will New Pen tell us that they don't know this guy does not have approval? So why is it now that all of you are now saying this guy does not have approval after all the damages? Reacting to the allegation, Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Femi Mzat, who visited the scene of the gas explosion, says the siting of the gas plant is not the issue, rather the non-enforcement of safety procedures. Hamzat added that the primary focus of the Lagos State government is to guarantee the survival of the victims battling for their lives. We've all been overseas before. So I've seen a gas station and then people live on top of it, even in the state of New Jersey. So, but what was done? So in terms of enforcement, protection, and so on. So, on. so it's difficult for me to say, I don't know, until the study is done and we see exactly what was wrong, if anything is wrong. But apparently, something must be wrong here because people died. So what happened, and those are the things we need to find out. It's too early to say. So what's in my mind now is not about compensation, it's about making sure that people that are in a or whatever come back alive. 
A high court sitting in Puta called the River State Capital has sentenced gracious David West, a serial killer, to death by hanging. After six months of trial, the suspect was convicted of the murder of 11 young women and attempted murder of a prospective victim identified as Benita Etim in a hotel in 2019. Justice Adolfo's Enabele, while delivering his judgment on Friday, held that the prosecution team was able to convince the court that David West has actually committed the crimes. The court, however, discharged and acquitted the second defendant in the case, Mimi Thangod, who is facing one count of misconduct with the corpse of one of David West's victims. David West's um, lawyers say he will appeal the judgment. A federal high court in Lagos has granted the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, temporary for feature of funds linked to Madashiro Obasa, Speaker of the Lagos State House of Assembly. The EFCC, in a motion dated August 12, 2020, asked the court to issue an order directing that the funds in three bank accounts be forfeited in the interim. According to the Anti-Graft Commission, the three bank accounts have been investigated for the offences of conspiracy, diversion of funds, abuse of office and money laundering. Meanwhile, Obasa said he is a reasonable, responsible lawmaker who has nothing to hide. Let's take a break here, but still to come, federal government issues fresh guidelines on reopening of schools. Details after this break. In the last three years, we have built a multi-purpose center, which is the envy of all in our constituency. And I can tell you that the people who are living there are already enjoying it. Guy, do you think what this man just said is true? See, I seriously doubt. I'm sure it's one of those, they are silly lies. And wait, do you know there's a way to find out if these things he's saying is true or not? Ah. This is the construct app. It gives people like us a sure way to track implementation of constituency projects. It gives valid and verified information on location of projects, amounts allocated, amounts funded, the level of job done, and even the profiles of concerned legislators. You and I can post directly on this app. Are you serious? This is the go-to app if you want to know how our commonwealth is being expended by the government. Wow. Let's even see if what this man said is true. Show me. The Construct app is developed by other people in Nigeria with support from USAID and is available on both Google Play Store and Apple Store. Eh, that is true. <laughs> of course, I told you. Corruption not in my country. Hello. Alahaji, Alahaji. Is it, right now I'm in Abuja. <laughs> no, no. Uh, hello? Adamu! Right now I'm in Kano. Yes. When I get back, I will just call you. Look, what is wrong with you? I'm talking on the phone and you are gesticulating and doing. What's wrong with you? Daddy, where exactly are we as we speak? Are you alright? This is Lagos. Well, you just lied to someone that we are in Abuja. Keep quiet then. Who told you you can tell an elderly person is lying? Daddy, you just lied. And by lying, you are raising corrupt children for the future of Nigeria. That is corruption, not in my country. Corruption, not in my country. Glad to have you back here yeah, are some of our top stories tonight. The outrage over police brutality and the extrajudicial killings by men of the federal special anti-robbery squad FSAS has continued to gather momentum across the country. As a protest tagged hashtag NSAS entered its third day, hundreds of demonstrators have besieged the Lagos State House of Assembly complex to press home their demands. It was, however, a different case in Ocean State in Abuja, where hashtag NSAS protests turned violent with clashes reported between security operatives and protesters. A high court sitting in Puta called the River State Capital has sentenced gracious David West, a serial killer, to death by hanging. After six months of trial, the suspect was convicted of the murder of 11 young women and attempted murder of a prospective victim 
identified as Benita Etim in a hotel in 2019. The court, however, discharged and acquitted her the second defendant in the case. Nimi Thangod, who is facing one count charge of misconduct with the corpse of one of David Wett's victims. Less than 24 hours to the governorship debate in Nondo State, the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, has ordered the restriction of vehicular movement in the state from 11.59 p.m. tonight to 6 p.m. on Saturday. Force spokesman Frank Mba said the order is part of the efforts by the force to ensure effective coordination of public order and safety during the poll. He added that the restriction order is aimed at preventing the circulation and use of illicit arms as well as movement of political thugs from other states to Undo. Let's now turn our focus to COVID-19 pandemic. Minister of Health Osage Hanere has warned Nigerians against taking trips to high-risk countries to avoid the second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic in the country. Hanere gave the warning during the bi-weekly briefing of the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19 in Abuja. Nigeria currently has a total of 59,841 COVID-19 infections after 103 new cases emerged on Thursday. We are concerned that there may be a surge in the number of positive cases that can happen here. If we do not take steps and respond properly with our strategy of trace, test, isolate and treat. We are particularly worried about this huge increase in COVID cases in certain countries with which we know that we have high volume of human traffic. The Federal Ministry of Health therefore wishes to advise Nigerians against non-essential travel to high burden countries, especially those Nigerians who have comorbidities that are well known and are who are at higher risk, the non-communicable diseases. The risks that the movement of travelers create can only be countered by improved surveillance programs. The federal government has released fresh guidelines for the reopening of schools across the country. National Coordinator of the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19, Sani Aliyu, disclosed this during a briefing in Abuja. Aliyu said the guidelines were developed to ensure schools can reopen so as to minimize the risk of transmission and continue to operate safely. The school authorities have the responsibility to ensure that everyone gaining access to their schools is screened properly, is wearing a mask and sanitizing their hands. Boarding schools must have identified areas for screening and putting positive students aside. There must be access to running water of some sort and hand washing facilities. The health staff, for, particularly in boarding schools, must be trained and provided with PPE. There must be appropriate waste management systems. Health facilities that are within the schools, that serve the schools, should have the ability to cater for an outbreak. And a response protocol must be in place for day schools, students who fall ill or test positive. And in this regard, it is important to involve parents and make sure that parents have signed consent forms in advance in, in the situation that urgent testing may be required of students. Lagos Governor Babajide Somolu has pardoned Nollywood actress Funke Akindele and her husband Adrashid Belo for violating government's COVID-19 lockdown regulations. Akindele Belo and her husband were on April 6 convicted by Lagos Magistrate Court after hosting a party during lockdown. They were sentenced to two weeks of community service, a non-custodial service centers and isolation by the court. A statement by Lagos Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice, 
Muyoshore Unibanjo said Songwulu granted state pardon to the couple on advice of the state's advisory council on prerogative of mercy. Let's take another break here and return with business stories. Welcome back. Let's now join Oyin Adekunle for the latest in business. Thank you very much, Shadi. Now, following the presentation of the 2021 budget expenditure estimated about 13.08 trillion naira to the joint session of the National Assembly by the President, Nigerians have started reacting to the budget presentation. Some believe the budget will address many infrastructural deficits in the country, while some feel otherwise. Our correspondent Atinuke Nuke spoke with Abuja residents and some lawmakers and files in this report. President Buhari on Thursday presented the 2021 budget proposal to the National Assembly and as expected, Nigerians will have different opinions about government revenue and how the budget will be funded and most importantly, the effect it will have on Nigerians and the Nigerian economy. TV360 crew spoke with some Abuja residents about this. You can't borrow to fund a budget and not as if borrowing is bad. We've been borrowing previously. The question is, what do you borrow to do? This administration keeps borrowing, but they don't invest. Because if you borrow, you must invest to have something generated out of the money you borrowed for you to pay back the debt and still have what it takes to run a country. If you see the breakdown, you will see over three trillion will be used to service debts. And these debts, there is nothing wrong for government to borrow to provide infrastructure in the country. In the national world, uh, that means it's no longer booming. And therefore, they rely on international borrowing to fund budgets. And that is why they're having issues. But if they're able to embark on agriculture and sponsor youths to go on a massive uh, bush burning, plantation, raising loans, and other means of survival, they'll stop borrowing. By the time they borrow, they're going to incur debts. Our nation incurred debt, you know, that, that, that country's economy. The borrowing became a necessity, and without budget, the economy will not move, you know, it's a necessary thing. So he shouldn't have done otherwise than the borrowing. And the way he allocated the funds to the various ministries and fire circles is an excellent one, in my view, especially what he gave to defense. Considering the security situation, we found ourselves. Some lawmakers from both chambers also lent their views concerning the budget. And, uh, I want to tell you that uh, we are going to work uh, very well to make sure we scrutinize the budget and give it the uh, proper attention uh, so that uh, it will be packaged in a way that will to meet the aspirations of the people of this country. The debt side is, as I said last year, I'm not happy with it because look at how the the debt service double from last year to this year. In his remarks, the Senate President Ahmed Lawan says due to inadequate revenue, government resorts to borrowing in order to finance its projects, while noting the importance of diversifying the sources of funding projects and programs. Lawan also said necessary reductions, reorder priorities and change in sources of funds and loans were made given the grim realities from the pandemic in reviewing the budget. From Abuja, Atinuke Nuki, TV360. Let's take a pause here and return with Stock Market Review. Don't go away.
Crucial market indicators on the Nigeria Stock Exchange dipped today by 0.46%, while market capitalization of all listed equities summed up at 14.852 uh, trillion naira. This downturn in the market was impacted by losses recorded in some blue chips company, uh, led, of course, by Guarantee Trust Bank, followed by Dangote Cement, PZ Cousins, and UCAP. But the gainers, despite the losses recorded by some stocks in the market today, they were, of course, course still gainers in the market. The gainers were led by Total PLC followed by Eternal and international breweries also chalked up some gains today followed by Custodian. Uh, moving on now to market summary about 384.1 million units of shares worth 3.9, nearly 4 billion naira exchange hands in 5,759 deals at the close of trading today. Let's now take a look at how foreign markets fared. We see that FTSE and Dow Jones are up there in the rise, 0.65%, 0.76% uh, gaining, of course, by those percentages. But while we see for Nikkei, Asian stocks are down, closing by 0.12% lower at the close of trading today. And that's it on B Business news. It's back to Fulashadi now for the rest of the news. Thank you for that update, Owen. President Donald Trump has rejected plans for his next debate with Democratic rival Joe Biden to be a virtual one to guard against spreading COVID-19 with reasons that his microphone could be caught off. Trump, who was released on Monday after he was hospitalized for three days with COVID-19, called the format change announced by the non-partisan commission in charge of the debates unacceptable. With the 3rd November election fast approaching, Trump also said he wanted to resume campaign rallies right away even as he continues to receive treatment. The first Trump beating debate was held on September 29 before Trump disclosed on Friday that he had tested positive for the novel coronavirus. And in sports, Nigeria winger Victor Moses is set to join Russian club Spartak Moscow on a one-year loan deal from Chelsea. Moses has been away from Chelsea since January 2018 when he linked up with Turkish Super League club Fenerbahce. He joined Chelsea from Wigan Athletic in 2012 and won the Europa League crown during his first season at the club. However, he spent the last three seasons on loan at Liverpool, Stoker City and West Ham United. And that's it on News Now. Thank you for watching. I am Fola Shadi Day.